Look out! He's firing his laser! Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's time for the last spooky mod collection demo shop update, even though these things launched on November 1st. So our first one is a black Les Paul Standard 50. It sold for 3200 and it's what we just had fun with. We've got a little scully dude with a hot laser, exploding your toggle switch with a red tip just for good measure. Other than that, this honestly reminds me of the old Gibson Les Paul Modern graphite metallic finish. In fact, it even has the Les Paul Modern style knobs. I'm not sure if this is referencing anything in particular, but it's interesting. Ooh, nice. Love the fact that it's left a dark cherry back with a regular headstock. And you get your black tuner tips for good measure. Since we're talking about skulls, apparently Tool is selling this thing. It's a human fetus inside of a skull. Thought I'd bring it up because it looks kind of similar to that guitar. And Tool's actually having a giveaway. If you buy one of those skulls, you're entered to win a black Les Paul custom for some reason instead of Silver Burst. That's been signed by the band. But trust me, those little skull dudes are not cheap. But our next spooky one, there's a disclaimer here. If you don't like blood being splattered on things, please just skip to this timestamp. This next one's not for everyone. So all right, fair warning done. Here is Bludgeon Beauty Satin. It's basically a white Les Paul custom that they did the whole blood splatter paint job on it. I don't really think it looks that good on the top personally. However, if you like the whole gore aesthetic, I could see you maybe liking the back of the headstock. Everything else was just kind of splattery. Apparently it's a satin finish, which I'm not really sure how that works because it sure does look gloss in these photos. But surprisingly, the headstock left unscathed. But well, what's kind of cool is you have a more modern pickup set in it, the 496R 500T, and they gave it the super fancy wiring. So you've got your options for attack. And it was listed at 5700. Certainly wasn't my favorite, but honestly, I think the price was fair for somebody who likes that. There's tons of manufacturers that have success with blood splatter paint jobs. Now, if you're thinking, hey, that's the first time I've ever seen Gibson do that, there actually was one other one. Stephen Coleman shares a lot of cool stories over on a Facebook group. And apparently about 10 years ago, around the same time, the custom shop whipped this bad boy up. Ultimately, it got refinished because Gibson management found it to be distasteful. Apparently, there was something that happened in history around that time. And I fully agree with that. Gibson is such a prestigious brand. I don't think we need to bring that into its lineup. So it's kind of funny to think somebody has that guitar and doesn't know. All right, the really spooky guitar's done. And kicking things off right with Grapeberry Burst. It was 3100 bucks. It looks pretty good in my opinion. Is that green sparkle flake in there? It's either green or silver. Kind of hard to tell. It might be like a multi-chromatic effect. I bet that one would be pretty sweet in person. But it's a 50 standard, so it's going to have the slightly bigger neck. And oh, cool. That's actually a dark back instead of just complete black. And they left our headstock alone. I was a fan of Dusty Pine Burst. Kind of a strange name, but it was 3,900 bucks and it's just kind of like a greenish yellow color. Looks like you got a little bit of a brownish red for the exterior. But then from this angle, it almost looks like they colored over the logos. However, I think that's just a particularly green piece of mother of pearl. We did have the continuation of the burst on the back and you've got some flames. Next up, another standard 50s in fall spice flavor. I will give it to them. That is a ridiculously dark fretboard. They had to have dyed that or something kind of a, a, a pumpkin-like color. The satin finish doesn't really play well with that hue, in my opinion. They dressed it up on the back with an extra long stinger and left you that nice natural roast color. Check this one out, a 58 double cut for 4,500 bucks. But when have you ever seen a silver burst one of these? I think it works surprisingly well. I'm not sure if a teardrop shape would work, but the perimeter complements this body style. I'd love to see this souped up a little bit more with maybe a black binding and then have mother of pearl block inlays on an ebony fretboard and put like a custom emblem on here. They really sold it by doing the paint job on the back. This P90's not a normal one. It's a Sidewinder P90H. And apparently they put a series parallel switch on a push-pull pot. And then your master tone has a coil split because that's how the P90Hs are done. They utilize two coils, kind of like a humbucker. I guess if you're going to have a one pickup guitar, you might as well have some fancy controls. I'm not surprised that sold. And then one for the lefties, a 63 reissue. Arctic Cobalt for 4,000 bucks. It's an electric blue SG special from the custom shop. Not much more to talk about there besides complimenting its beauty. Then we had Fire T60 Standard. I'm not sure how to feel about this one. The clear pick guard's cool, but the clear knobs, I, I don't know, mix that with the very, very tiny border. It just makes it kind of look like a fake. Definitely a unique color scheme with the dark red back. 
Perhaps you'll like Icy Indigo Flame Top better. So this one's 3200. I really like that. It kind of reminds me of like the mulberry finish that they've used before. Looks like they're using some experimental ambered over knobs. I feel the lighter colored fretboard pairs well with the hue. And it appears we've got a satin finish on the back. Then there's Copper Metallic 70s V. I guess you could say they were trying to be spooky pumpkins over here as well. Since we've got our matching headstock and blacked out plastics. But now we need to move over to the EU mod collection. So we talked about their new photo last week and saw many of them. This time, this one showed up. Melon Fade Metallic. I can't help but think, didn't we see this one in the USA side of things? It's so hard. Because you don't know if they were just inspired and then they're being demotivated by me saying, Hey, didn't we already see this? We've got kind of like a red and a pinkish burst. I like that they have the P94 pickups with the white plastics to really pop it all. If you need a Floyd Rose equipped Les Paul, this is pretty cool. But very interesting that we still have a natural back and sides. They motoed the back plates. And you know it had to have been refinished because the custom shop always puts their little decal back here. So seeing the Apex head carve without that is kind of strange. But this is one of the DS serial numbers, 42. So the answer to everything will only cost you 5,500 euro. The next one's not as exciting. Ebony Satin SG Custom, one of the two pickup varieties. I think I would like a Black Satin 3 pickup SG Custom. Currently we're rocking a P94 in the neck. This one does a thing that I'm sure someone will appreciate, but it's priced at 53 euro. Then we had a 64 reissue 335 at 66. It's kind of expensive though. It's got an interesting grainy slash a little bit of flamey top with some VOS stuff going on. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like whatever's going on there. Then there's a Trad Pro 5 in here randomly. Triple A flame top at 2,500 euro. The back looks like so. And then a Bourbon Burst 60s. Looks like they changed the pickups to 490R, 498T and gave them silver toppers over the pickup rings. And maybe played with our plastics and black hardware a bit. But before we move on to the demo shops, I have one more spooky guitar to share with you guys. All right, about a week or two ago, we talked about the Firefly ES345. A viewer of the show actually purchased it and he found something unsettling under blacklight. Here it is. <laughs> Did somebody get a little too excited making this guitar or is that like another blood splatter? UV lights can show animal urine, it can show bodily fluids in general, among other things. So he had bought this guitar and decided to view it under blacklight and saw this. And uh, he was kind of upset about it, so he actually ended up returning it. And you might say, hey, why on earth is he returning this if you're only going to see that under blacklight? He actually brought up a really good point. This is a flashy guitar. He wanted to play this out on stage where he would have a blacklight, but this kind of becomes embarrassing <laughs> rather than cool. But I'd be really curious, what caused that? So if we see the Firefly ES345 in the European mod collection, yeah, now we know why. But now our demo shops. We'll start in the UK today. Real easy. They didn't update again. Two weeks in a row, they're on a vacation. Wouldn't surprise me if that's like a one or two guy team. However, the European demo shop came back this week. And pretty strong, I might add. Look at this. 64 reissue SG Standard Custom Shop Heavy Antique Pelham Blue. That's right. That is blue. It's just got a really ambered over clear coat. You can kind of see that over here over top our binding. That's when Pelham Blue is really cool, in my opinion. It's almost more so alien tech green at this point, but you're going to have like a little bit of metallic flake within it. Seems we've got some scratches and or finish checking, but whoa. Yeah, if you couldn't tell it on the binding, you can definitely tell the yellowed clear coat on the Gibson logo. You don't see this finish enough. I would like to see Gibson do it more often because this one sold for five grand. They had a couple of 12 string acoustics. Not necessarily that exciting, but you don't see them every day. But I was pretty shocked by this J45 Deluxe Rosewood. Especially the fact that this thing was made in 2023. I didn't even realize this was a model. It's got a lot of stuff going on. So first off, we've got Rosewood back and sides. You've got a really cool line going down here with a cool design. Then our headstock, it's got the old world Gibson logo with kind of a larger crown. But then you've got this deluxe truss rod cover. Something just doesn't look right about this headstock. It might be because of the thick single ply binding, but usually when you see this version of the Gibson logo, it's slightly askew. So I think that makes it look strange among other things. But wait until you see this neck. I'm a big fan of it. That is a nice piece of mahogany. It's got a lot of nice dancing to it. Kind of an interesting acoustic guitar. Not traditional in the slightest, but it's bound up to wazoo and it's got some interesting tone woods. And if that wasn't enough, you've got kind of interesting inlays going up and down it. 
But our next one is a standard J45. This one's 3200 bucks, but I didn't want to share this because of the guitar. I wanted to share it because of this. At first I was like, is that an oil slick finish? It's got a little bit of red, yellow, blue. But no, if we zoom in here to look at the photographer's captured soul, if you look at his shirt, I think that is reflecting off of the guitar. Not gonna lie, produced kind of a cool effect. Then check this out, 57 Candy Apple Blue. This had to have been in one of Gibson's showcases or lent out to an artist because it is beat up. First thing that caught my attention is, yeah, it's an awesome finish, but what's going on here? Those are extra deep scratches. And it appears that they've scratched through the top coat into the silver coat of the candy blue finish. So that's why it looks a little bit strange right there. But at the same time, because of that, it starts to look like a cosmic stew, Les Paul. It's kind of a cool effect. The candy finishes never disappoint. And I always love seeing custom color R7s. They're a lot of fun because they're not as expensive as a true 59 reissue, but sometimes you can find some really cool variations on them. This Lefty 60 standard had some interesting wood grain on the back. There's also a naked LG2, no pick guard on this particular model. Just like our poor blue R7, this thing has been beat up. I mean, it's from 2014, it's been in the showcase a while. Those artists just went to town. And then I saw this and said, hey, I would like to see this come back to the Gibson lineup. A P90 equipped SG standard? I don't think they've offered this in a little bit of time. At least the Batwing guard style. Sure, you can get the SG special, but it's just not quite the same. But this one's from 2016. Now we can finally move on to the USA side of things. There were a lot of players grade stuff, but here's what stood out to me. Plain tops. 58 reissue for 4300. Has a nice top to it, no flame figuring necessarily, just some ringiness with a really dark back. But perhaps this one was more to your style, a bit more hypnotic for a little bit more money. But then on the other end of the spectrum, 50s figure top. That's one of the nicest honey ambers that I've seen. Kind of almost has a AFD like vibe to it. Not only was the top cool, the back also had a little bit of figuring. Then you don't see the true 54 reissues very often, but this one sold for 3500 Low logo and all. And then lastly, this is just a heads up for the loyal viewers. The Rick Beato double cut. If you missed this, Gibson has actually restocked it on their website. That's right. The second run that's been <laughs> rumored on all these Rick Beatos finally happened, at least on the sparkling burgundy satin. I'm not sure how long they'll stay in stock, but yeah, you can go to Gibson's website and find them. I wonder if this one will continue to be produced, whereas the blue one was a true limited edition, or I wonder if these will actually start to get shipped out to dealers. Because so far, it still seems this one is a Gibson.com exclusive. But if you happen to have caught this in time, you could have got a $400 discount, which is really good on one of these seeing as they typically sell at a premium to their new price. And all you have to live with is a small scuff over here. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.